Hey, welcome back. It's been almost three years since my MacBook Air M2 became my trusted companion for all my daily work tasks. And now, I think it's time to share with you how it's been going with it during all this time. Let's talk about performance and reliability. In short, I'll tell you whether it did its job well or if it decided to go on vacation without telling me. That way, if you're also thinking about getting a MacBook Air with an M chip, maybe looking to save some money and not necessarily going for the latest M4 model, you can get an idea of what to expect from a slightly older version. Let's start with the fact that the main reason to buy an Air model is not to get a machine with top-tier performance, something made for professional-level work. That's exactly why Apple also offers the Pro line, which comes with insanely powerful processors designed for more demanding tasks. Going for the Air means you're probably looking for convenience and portability in your everyday use, thanks to its form factor and lightweight. It's meant to be an all-around device that lets you dive fully into the Apple ecosystem and take advantage of everything it offers, from iCloud to writing apps, spreadsheets, or any other feature Apple came up with. And this MacBook Air M2 really captures that idea perfectly. Over all this time, it's given me a full experience inside Apple's ecosystem, with very few compromises. Its performance and overall quality let you work comfortably and stress-free. That's because I found the system to be stable, quick to load, and perfectly in sync with its buddy, the iPhone. This model comes with 8GB of RAM, which today seems a bit outdated compared to the new models that offer 16GB as the new standard, which I really appreciate and that definitely boosts performance. But honestly, these 8GB have never struggled or held this device back in any way. Of course, everything depends on your needs and the type of work you do. In my case, I mainly use it for browsing the web, checking emails, light photo and video editing, writing, and spreadsheets to manage my YouTube work. And for all that, it has been the perfect work partner. Sure, I did feel its limits in moments when I needed more powerful software, like for more complex video editing. In that case, I would have needed to go for a more advanced and powerful model. Also, since this version doesn't have a fan, it can heat up easily, which affects performance. But that's part of what makes this laptop great. It has a slim, lightweight design that makes it nice to look at, easy to carry around, and ideal for working remotely. On top of that, its design is still very similar to the latest Air models and manages to keep pretty much all the key features. Fast charging with MagSafe, two USB-C ports, the fingerprint button, the large trackpad, the backlit keyboard, the high-resolution webcam for video calls, and the sharp, vibrant display. Basically, everything you need for a solid experience. I was pretty worried at first that the hinges might wear out over time, but so far, they've held up great. It still feels just as solid and smooth as it did on day one. I've always tried to take good care of it using protective cases, actually made a video about that, that I mainly use when taking it out with me. They've really helped keep it in perfect shape, with no discoloration or annoying scratches. The only annoying thing is the keyboard. It's lost its shine, which kind of ruins the overall look. I find it odd that Apple, being so obsessed with details, hasn't found a better material to make it last longer. It's a small downside, but easy to overlook, especially when you consider that Apple keeps updating its operating system every year, giving you new features while still running smoothly thanks to the M chip, which really helps the system evolve over time. In fact, my Air just got the latest Sequoia update, and it's still running super smooth. One feature I was really looking forward to is screen splitting, and I'm happy it's finally here. I love that it connects easily to an external display and keeps the visual quality high, letting you work comfortably on both screens. Even with this kind of setup, I've never noticed any major slowdowns or overheating that forced me to stop working. Also, just recently it received the Apple Intelligence update, which I'm still exploring to understand everything it can do. But I can already see how well it's integrated, like chatting with Siri, using smarter writing tools, or generating fun images with AI. So overall, I'd still call it a solid computer even today, despite the newer M3 and M4 versions, which I haven't had the chance to try yet, so I can't really tell you what they offer over the M2. Surely, more power would help you handle heavier programs more smoothly. But bottom line, the MacBook Air M2 still gives me everything I need to get through my daily tasks with ease, and I don't really feel the need to upgrade. What reinforces this even more is the battery life. I'll tell you, I never shut it down because I want it ready at all times, kind of like we do with our phones. Whether it's in standby or active use, it still manages power really well. And since I only use it a few hours a day, 
the battery lasts me over a week easily. Want to know something even better? After all this time, the battery health has only dropped to 98% of its max capacity. I think that's pretty impressive. So, after all these years of use, I have to say I'm happy with the purchase. Personally, I'd now prefer to have 16 gigabytes of RAM and the larger 15-inch screen, since I believe those would make the everyday experience even better and be more future-proof. And speaking of the future, I'm sure the MacBook Air M2 will still hold up for quite a while, even without expecting too much from it. That's important to consider, especially when thinking about the cost of buying a new device like this. Upgrading can be a financial effort, so it's a choice that really needs to be made carefully, weighing all your options. Also, with the current changes happening around import duties, this might actually be the right time to get an Apple device, because prices could go up significantly in the near future. What about you? Do you already have a Mac? Or are you thinking of getting one? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, drop a free like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next updates. See you next time. Stop, 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 stop.